for this lesson is Core 2 Differential Equations, um, and it follows on from the review that we had before. So if you can start off with a bit of scrap paper, um, or whiteboard if you happen to have your own, we're just going to recap on the product rule for differentiation. So there you can see there's a question, find d dx x cos x. If you need to pause the video at any point, then please do so. So that goes to v du dx plus u dv dx. It's the second one. d dx x e to the x. So that goes to v du dx plus u dv dx. Here's the third one. So that goes to v du dx plus u dv dx. So y squared goes to 2y dy dx to make it right. d dx x e to the y. So that goes to v du dx plus u dv dx, e to the y dy dx to make it right. And this last one goes to uh, dy dx cos x minus y sin x. Um, so that's v du dx goes to 1 dy dx to make it right plus u dv dx and that's normal differentiation. So the method that we're going to look at today is called integrating factors. So when we can't write our first order differential equation in this form, um, which would be suitable for separation of variables, but if it's still a linear equation, it can be solved by a method using an integrating factor. So what do I mean by a linear equation? So a linear first order differential equation looks like this. So it's got dy dx plus y, some multiple of y equals q. P and Q can be functions of X, and we have a first order derivative, and we have a Y, um, which is a linear term. So, you don't need to make any notes on this, but please do try to follow it. So, find the general solution of this differential equation. Now, we're going to play a bit of a guessing game here, and notice something special about the left-hand side. So the left-hand side actually can be contracted to be d dx y cos x, and that's because when we differentiate y cos x, we get v du dx plus u dv dx. So that's another way of writing the same thing. So now we integrate both sides with respect to x. On the left-hand side, we get y cos x, and on the right-hand side, we do normal integration, and don't forget the plus c. Here's another one. So, it's of the same form um, of the stuff in the oval. Um, so we've got a p equals 2 over x and q equals 4 over x squared. So, perhaps not an obvious thing to do, but I'm going to times it by x squared all the way through. And so we end up going from this first equation to this one here. And that's because the left-hand side can be contracted to be d dx x squared y. Let's have a little check. So we have uh, u dv dx plus v du dx. So it's definitely true. Integrating both sides with respect to x. And don't forget the plus c. And then we could go on to write it as y equals. So, again, you don't need to write this down, but please try to follow it. So, how this works then, if we can see how to write the left-hand side, then you can go ahead and do what we just did on the previous two examples. But if you can't, we want to have it in this form in the oval, and then we will sort out what we need to multiply it by. So, we start with dy dx plus py equals q. 
So we need something, a function of x called r, which we multiply all the way through it, which means we can contract the left-hand side so that if we were then to um, have it written as ddx ry, we would then be able to expand it as v du dx plus u dv dx. Now, if we differentiate this left-hand side, we get um, r dy dx plus dr dx y. And we want that to match that with what we had back up here. So we can see there are a couple of terms that cancel together. So we're left with dr dx y equals r p y. So dr dx y equals r p y. So therefore, we can divide through by y dr dx equals rp, separate up the variable, so the r comes down here, the dx goes up there, stick integral symbols in front, and then go ahead and now integrate as the variables have been separated up. So log r is the integral of p dx, which means that the r that we originally chose to multiply through by is e to the integral of p dx, and that's called the integrating factor. You might want to review that last couple of pages. Let's see it in action. So we want to find the solution of this differential equation that satisfies this particular condition. So we start by writing it in that form dy dx plus py equals q, where p and q are functions of x. So I need to divide through by x squared. So it's disappeared from the first term, divided down, divided down. So we now have p is 1 over x and q is 2 over x cubed. The integrating factor is r equals e to the integral of p dx, so p is 1 over x, so we put that in there, integrate it, and e and log happen to go off together in this one to leave us with just x. So we multiply through our equation that's in the form dy dx plus py equals q by the integrating factor, so we get this line here, and so just making it look a little more pretty, we've got this one here. Now the left hand side contracts to um, y times the integrating factor, which is x. So d d dx x y. Let's just have a little check though that that's definitely right. So v du dx plus u dv dx. Yes, I'm happy with that. We can now go ahead and solve it. So we got to this stage here, integrating both sides with respect to x will give us this statement here, and don't forget the plus c. Then we divide through by x and get our general solution. I'll let you check that you agree with the particular solution. So, the steps you need to follow. Write the differential equation in the form dy dx plus py equals q, where p and q are functions of x, and I've called that star. Evaluate the integrating, integrating factor r, where r is e to the integral of p dx. In other words, whatever the function of x that's in front of y is here. Multiply equation star by r to get a new equation, and you should be able to then write the left-hand side as d dx r y. And just check it really does work. You now should have something that you can integrate with respect to x. Then complete your solution by giving either a general solution or a particular solution, depending on the information given. So here is a question for you to try. So find the general solution of this differential equation, follow the steps, and find the particular solution which satisfies the condition that y equals 2 when x equals 0. Please pause the video now. Here are the answers, and actually this is the example 4 on page 150 to 151, so you can look up how you got on. Please now complete exercise 7a, page 151, question 3 onwards.